We are now at Jerusalem. This is <clears throat> the western wall of the temple, not of the city. And you can see Jaffa Gate in front of you. And what we're going to do now, we will follow the walls of the city and we will go through Jaffa Road and you will see the old and the new. This is the old one. The walls that you see in front of you is from the 16th century, built by, uh, by Suleiman the Magnificent. And this is the western part of the city. The big building that you see there, it's King David Hotel, one of the most expensive hotels. The flag that you can see on top of one of the towers is the flag of the Vatican. The other side of the wall, it's the Christian quarter. And uh, name, uh, the name of uh, Jaffa Gate gives you the clue that we are actually walking through Jaffa, which is Tel Aviv today. And that was the main road for so many pilgrims who reach uh, Jerusalem from Europe and North Africa. I'm walking on top of the roof of a shopping mall. I'm a little bit afraid of taking groups through that shopping mall because slowly, slowly they are disappearing. If it's your first video, then welcome. You are now part of my family. And uh, please subscribe my channel and ring the bell. And you will be able to get the latest videos of mine. And in the description, you will find ways to connect me, to talk with me. If you need something, you need some help, be my guest. <clears throat> That was the border between Israel and Jordan. The old city of Jerusalem was a bit, uh, supposed to be owned by the United Nations. In 1948, when the UN declared of Israel and Palestine, Jerusalem wasn't supposed to be part of Israel and not even part of Palestine. Then why did Jordanian conquer it? Mainly because they did it to the Palestinian. Uh, in a way, the occupied Palestine changed the name of Palestine to the West Bank and they conquered and occupied the whole city. That until 1967, that was the border between Israel and Jordan. And I'm now walking on a, a no man land, United Nations area. One of the entrances to the shopping mall. You can see there the corner of the western wall of the temple, of, of the city, and the northern wall. From the northern part, the crusader entered to the city. And today it's the birthday of Muhammad. I was at the Muslim quarter an hour ago. It was so it was crowded. A lot of people, a lot of disciples, Muslim disciples, entered to the to Al Aqsa. And happy birthday, Muhammad! You can see the first, I think, Hasidi Jew that arrived through to you but if you will enter to the old city you will see a lot of them here we are you can see the corner of the walls 
western wall, beginning of the northern wall. And those two buildings, in a way, were at the, in the border. That building uh, was owned by the Jordanians, and it's a, it's a hospital. And the story tells us about a nun who looked downstairs <coughs> from the window, sorry, and a thief fell down. Then the UN, the Israeli, and the Jordanians had to bring it back to her. In front of you, it used to be the municipality of Jerusalem. And if we will go, we'll go closer to it, you will see the bullet holes. Uh, on the wall. The upper part was the municipality and the lower part, the lower part almost fell. Oh yeah, welcome to the East World. The lower part belongs until to the Barclays Bank. At least it used to be on right now. You can see the light rail and this is a nice video because you will be able to see the two of them out and at the view of the old city. That one is heading to Damascus Gate now. That's it will be the next stop. And that one is entering to Jaffa Road. Let me show it to you. You can see the second story. I'll try to be as close as I can. You can see the bullet holes. And welcome to Jaffa Road. If you will continue straight ahead, it will take you only three days, but you will reach Tel Aviv and Jaffa. On the way, you can stop at the airport, Ben Gurion Airport. That building is, belongs to the Armenians. We do have Armenians in Israel. Some of them ran away uh, or from the Turkish regime that killed 1.5 million of them in 1915. If you don't know about it, go and study about it. This is that area in 1967. That is the um, municipality building. And that's the border. You couldn't uh, cross it. And here you can see Ben Gurion uh, watching the city from from there. Couldn't cross that place. Jaffa Gate is here, but look at the buildings next to the wall. That's how it used to be closed. Can you see the wall? Here it is. It's supposed to be a rainy day, but a rainy day in Israel, as you can see, it's totally not. I'm sweating. It's um, only 75 degrees. But the sun, in the sun it's quite hot, uh, 22 degrees uh, Celsius. The municipality, the new part, is to your right side, right there. It's a beautiful square. 
And look at the houses. Usually the first story are, were shops and people lived above them. But look how beautiful it is. It's a mixture between Arabic and European style. Another light rail, it's every few minutes, as you can understand. And look to the right with me. Look at that. One of the biggest radios. I think in the world. Municipality complex. The city hall is now to your right side. You will see it soon. There's always festivals at the square. Here it is. You can still see the walls of the city and the flag of the Vatican. One of the most beautiful buildings that I love. Um, and in a way, uh, it was built uh, in the Bauhaus, international style, is that building, but we will reach it soon. First, let's go to see a replica of a map. This map is from Germany, 15th century. That tells you where, where Jerusalem. You see that Jerusalem is in the center of the world. And Asia is to the right, Europe is to the left, and uh, Africa is south of it. America was found Lately, if you know what to put it, then it's right there. Don't be offended, Americans. There's always exhibitions in that area. And we are going back to that building. This is the post office. One of the few buildings that were built by the British who conquered Israel in 1917. But it's a beautiful building. Let me take a picture of it before the light rail will come. What I'm doing? I'm going to I'm, I'm I'm going to drink coffee in one of the most unique places in Jerusalem. It's quite he a hidden place. It's a second store book, but beautiful, beautiful uh, building. And if it's okay by you, I'm gonna switch to the other side of the road because of the shade. Just for fun. You can see the posted stamp from the British time, and it used to be big that you can actually send it through that. But then the Intifada came, and uh, we were afraid that someone would put a bomb in it, and we blocked it. Sorry. That's the entrance, as you can see. Even here, that will check you. Austin Harrison was actually designed it. Beautiful, beautiful place. It's a pedestrian in a way if you're not taking the light trail as part of it. And on Friday night and Saturday, it's such an amazing place to visit it. But on a Friday night, although there's no public transportation because of Shabbat, it's a holiday, that most of the coffee places and the shops are not open. Most of them are kosher, and you will find the kosher sign on it. For example, here, 
there's no kosher sign, then maybe it's not. As you can understand, it's not only for tourists. It's a many not for tourists here. You can see it's, it's in Hebrew, but you see the map of um, Italy, then you can understand that it's a pizzeria. And there's say kosher le madrin, it's like double kosher, glad kosher. It's a beautiful street, isn't it? Soon we will see generally building. It's, it's an uh, Italian um, architect who built it in uh, 1934 uh, for business building. But you will see Mark. Mark? Yes. Remember uh, the patron of uh, the Venice city? St. Mark, and it's the symbol of uh, Generali um, Insurance Company. Now let me show you how it looks like when they build it. Here it is. Remember that corner and remember symbol of Mark and Generali. And, oh, it's a little bit chilly here, but I prefer it than 40 degrees. Ah, now we cannot see it from here. Super farm. In front of you, it's, um, uh, you some, uh, hygiene things, some medicine, something like that. And you can find it, it's a, the biggest chain of pharmacy, pharmacy chain in uh, Israel. Ta-da-da, here it is. Can you see Mark? So Mark is in front of you. There, you can see a Russian church. And uh, maybe next time we'll, uh, we will go through the Prophet Street, then uh, you will see beautiful buildings of the Germans, of the Russians, of the Ethiopians. Amazing street, the Prophet Street. And Nevihim, that's in Hebrew. Let's continue. Look at the beautiful buildings. Again, another Bawa's building, a eclectic building. It's like a little bit from there, a little bit from here. And this is a weekday. Um, to, today, I think it's Tuesday, then totally in the weekday. October 2021. And it's beautiful to visit it, mainly because it's not touristic. Well, no, there are no tourists now, but it's not touristic. Falafel. I can see now the word kosher. Kosher le mehadrin, it's glad kosher. And veggie. If you like veggie food, this is the place for you. Usually when they say kosher, you won't be able to eat uh, some kind of animals like pork. Uh, like pigs and uh, they won't mix dairy products with meat then you all might be di dairy restaurant or meat restaurant but not all together the non-kosher restaurant doing whatever they want let me show you the logo of the place that we are doing and we are, uh, I'm going to eat soon, but I will take you first to another part of the street. Then we'll make a run tour. The restaurant is called, and this is difficult, Tmol Shilshom. And I'm going there because it's, it's different. It's, it's, 
It's one of the places that accept everyone. It doesn't matter if you're Christian, Jew, religious, not religious. Um, the only problem is that they have only dairy products and excellent pasta and pizza and uh, fish. Fish, it's okay. Fish, it's for the uh, for the one who eats uh, meat or dairy products. It's called parve. It's not important. I mean, you can mix it. Then they have fish. They have uh, lots of things to eat. And at night time, they have a lot of uh, meeting with the uh, authors and poets. Uh, small groups. And some of them are in English. That is Zion Square, and Zion Square you can find a lot of people who will. Um, oh, well, you can, you can uh, see there them playing, dancing, like that woman, for example. And there is a pedestrian, a lovely one, all the way there, Ben Yehuda. Ben Yehuda. I will show you the name of it soon. But it's beautiful to walk. I mean, if you are here, then do that. Another option, I'm not going there now, maybe later on, is to continue with Jaffa Road until you will reach the kosher market. The name of the kosher market is a little bit difficult to remember. It's called Machne Yehuda. But if you will say, where is the most famous kosher market in Jaffa Road, everyone knows what you are talking about. Then it's not a problem at all. And don't miss it, especially at night time when that place is turning to be um, a beautiful entertainment area with excellent kosher food. Don't do that on Friday night. Friday night and Saturday night, this is the kosher city. Most of the places are closed. There are places that you can actually visit, I mean restaurants on Friday, they're non-kosher places, but it's not as famous as in Tel Aviv, which is a totally non-kosher uh, city. Tel Aviv and Jerusalem, it's like two different countries. Another pedestrian, which is worth visiting. Look at the umbrellas. We are wishing for rain. And this is a rainy day. Lots of good places here and McDonald's, even that. Another place not to be missed. I will show you the name of that street. It's one of the first um, Jewish neighborhoods outside the wall. I will look for the sign of the street in English, of course. Oh, I didn't show you uh, but the other street name, but if you were rich, Yoel Moshe Salomon. It's very close to Benio the Street. And we are at the corner of Shammai Street. And what you have to look for is the sign in yellow of Tmol Shilshom. Here it is. Tmol Shilshom. It's in Yoel Salomon 9, 9 Yon, Yoel Salomon Street. Yeah, it actually tells us to go in. And when we are going in, we're entering into the neighborhood. The outside street were the walls, but people lived in the walls, like a square. 
There it is in front of you. For example, that was a synagogue. Climbs those stairs. Tut Malshushom. Funny to say because it's old houses. The toilet where uh, they share the toilet and where the two ladies are waiting. That's where the toilets of the restaurants are. But we're gonna climb up the stairs. Now if you do have a wheelchair it's a little bit problematic to reach but it's beautiful. They have like two rooms and people can sit out there too. Let me show it to you and you will understand why it's charming and it's totally kosher. That's, that's Dan. Dan say hi. Is the owner of that place, and this is the first part. Ooh. Look how amazing it is! And the second room of Tmol Shushan. We just go outside. I think it's closed. And let me show it to you from that window. Amazing, isn't it? More to show. But now you can say that you are real Jerusalem people. Um, did you subscribe my channel? If you reach that point, more than 27 minutes, um, then then tell me that. I want to know if you're watching the videos until the end or not. This is part of the beautiful uh, events that we have here. See you in my next video and it's kosher. Bye bye.